Now, Luffy's crew is heading towards Big Mom's whole cake island, to rescue Sanji, but, they are facing a big storm, making everyone exhausted, because they haven't eaten anything for days, but, Luffy is still determined to bring Sanji back, on Sanji's side, they have reached Big Mom's territory, at this moment, Tamago continuously urges Sanji and Jerma 66 to join the Big Mom pirates, this angers Sanji, it turns out Big Mom knows Sanji is a cook, so, she wants him to join her crew, but Sanji says, these hands only cook for my friends, suddenly, they showed Sanji a picture of his fiance, this excites Sanji, because she is so beautiful, the next morning, everyone on the ship is busy preparing wedding gifts for Sanji, meanwhile, Vito keeps telling Sanji, to persuade Jerma 66 to work for Big Mom, but, Sanji wants nothing to do with Jerma 66, at this moment, Caesar is very angry, because they have captured and treated him terribly, while Sanji says he will not get married, this angers Gotti, who intends to attack Sanji, but, Shafan arrives to stop him, she frightens him, because Sanji is the son of the Vinsmoke family, if they attack him, it will cause trouble for Beiji, as they leave, Sanji feels that Shafan looks a lot like Lola, while Caesar feels jealous of Sanji, because he is a member of the Vinsmoke family, on Luffy's side, they are very hungry, making them all exhausted, so, they can only hope to catch fish, Chopper notices that this place is very hot, even the seawater is boiling, thus, Luffy sees Chopper as emergency food, suddenly, his fishing rod catches a fish, so, Luffy tries to pull the fish up, unexpectedly, the fish is too big, thus, everyone cheers for Luffy, but, the fish is too strong, they help Luffy pull it onto the ship, finally, Luffy's group has food, this makes them very happy, but, Nami and Chopper notice the fish's strange color, Chopper worries the fish might be poisonous, so, Chopper tells Luffy not to eat it, to check in Sanji's book, Chopper runs to Sanji's cupboard, but in his cupboard, there are only books about girls, luckily, he finds the book about fish, this shocks Chopper, because the skin of this fish is very poisonous, but, when he returns to inform Luffy, Luffy has already eaten the fish, this makes everyone worried, however, Luffy feels his body is fine, Chopper says they need to remove the fish's skin before eating it, as Luffy prepares to cook for them, then, Nami gets angry, because she's afraid he'll burn the kitchen again, so, Nami starts looking at Sanji's book to cook, they see that Nami's cooking looks delicious, this makes everyone very happy, they feel like they have come back to life, when Nami brings the food to Chopper, she sees that Luffy is poisoned, this makes Chopper very worried, because to cure this poison, he needs a lot of herbs, at this moment, everyone eats while worrying about Luffy, Peckham says they are about to enter Big Mom's territory, so, finding an antidote for Luffy will be very difficult, suddenly, Nami sees a lot of snow, but, they realize it is cotton candy, this excites Chopper and Carrot, at this moment, the territorial sea slugs have alerted Luffy's ship, because they have entered Big Mom's territory, suddenly, Pedro sees a large patrol ship approaching, this makes them worried, but, Chopper announces the poison is spreading throughout Luffy's body, so, they must quickly find an antidote for him, Peckhams tells them to run inside the ship, to let him encounter Big Mom's patrol ship, suddenly, Peckhams discovers they are actually Jerma 66, not members of Big Mom's crew, this surprises Luffy's group, they realize this ship belongs to the Straw Hat Pirates, so, they steer their ship to ram into the Sunny, luckily, Nami quickly steers the Sunny to dodge them, Chopper sees someone who looks a lot like Sanji staring at them, so, Chopper thinks it's Sanji, making them very happy, but he says, you've mistaken me for someone else, my name is Yanji, which surprises them, it turns out he is Sanji's younger brother, suddenly, Yanji sees Nami, who is very beautiful, which captivates him, they realize this personality trait of his is very similar to Sanji's, but, Luffy's condition is very critical, the poison is spreading throughout his body, so, Chopper asks Yanji for the antidote, however, he outright refuses and says, if you want the antidote, come here and take it, this makes Nami very angry, suddenly, he is kicked and sent flying into the sea, surprising Chopper, now, another woman appears, making Nami's group worried, because they thought she was an enemy, turns out she is Sanji's sister, her name is Reiju, also known as Poison Pink, this surprises them, because she is incredibly beautiful, suddenly, Yanji flies up, and he blames Reiju for kicking him, Chopper sees Yanji flying, so, he thinks he ate a devil fruit, Peckhams explains to them that it's science, Jerma 66 turns out to be a scientific combat unit, 
That's exactly what Big Mom is searching for. This delights Chopper. Brooke recognizes the Vinsmoke family as former rulers of the North Blue. They were also known as demons, but, Reju says the Vinsmokes are still royalty, and they qualify to attend the reverie. Suddenly, Brooke asks, can I see your panties? So, Nami promptly hits him. Reju notices that Luffy is severely poisoned. She realizes Luffy has eaten a highly poisonous fish. Its venom could even kill a giant, which worries Chopper, but Reju says, this is my favorite food. Suddenly, she kisses Luffy, surprising everyone. It turns out she has sucked out all the poison from Luffy's body. Now, the poison is transferring through Reju's body, but she quickly absorbs all of Luffy's poison, leaving Nami's group amazed. Chopper realizes Luffy's body has returned to normal. Reju isn't affected by the poison. Suddenly, Luffy wakes up, making Carrot and Chopper very happy, but he doesn't know what's going on. Luffy only remembers the delicious fish skin, making Nami angry. Luffy wonders why her eyebrow is so similar to Sanji's. When he finds out she's Sanji's sister, it makes Luffy very happy. Reju informs Luffy's group that Sanji left his family when he was still young, so they have been searching for him. When Sanji's family learned he was wanted, they asked the Marines to increase his bounty and changed dead or alive to only alive. Now, Luffy wants to know where Sanji is. Reju says Sanji could be with Big Mom or her father. She thinks Luffy's group came here for the wedding party. Luffy immediately says, you have to return Sanji to us. Reju is surprised. Yanji realizes his sister saved an enemy. Suddenly, he recognizes Peckham's as a member of Big Mom's pirate crew, so he doesn't understand why Peckham's is with the Straw Hat pirates. Reju flies back to her ship, because they don't want to cause trouble before Sanji's wedding. Finally, they depart. So, Luffy's group continues searching for Sanji, Chopper checks and finds that Luffy's body has recovered, making Carrot very happy. However, Luffy still wants to eat fish. Peckham says they are approaching a small island. It turns out to be one of Big Mom's 34 territories, and each island is managed by a member of Big Mom's pirate crew. It's called Toto Land Archipelago, so they need to disguise themselves to enter. Suddenly, Carrot sees another ship approaching. Peckham says it's Big Mom's reconnaissance ship, so he tells Luffy's group to hide inside their ship, to let him handle things here. At this moment, Peckham's is deceiving the guards. Peckham says that this ship is one he stole, and it's being prepared to be delivered to Big Mom. This makes the guards very happy. Nami's group sees that everything is fine, so they feel relieved. Suddenly, Pedro can't find Chopper and Luffy anywhere. It turns out Luffy and Chopper sneakily went to explore the island. This delights them, because this town is built with chocolate. Luffy sees many different races of people here. Meanwhile, Chopper wants to immediately eat chocolate and candy. They see a fountain made of chocolate. So, Luffy and Chopper try throwing it. The taste of chocolate is very sweet. They are very happy. Thus, Luffy and Chopper go sightseeing in other places. Unexpectedly, the clothes and all the items here are made of chocolate. Chopper feels this place is like paradise. Suddenly, he smells a very fragrant scent. So, Luffy and Chopper quickly run off. Meanwhile, Peckham's tells Nami's group to disguise themselves. Unexpectedly, Nami and Carrot look very cute. So, Brooke immediately wants to see their underwear. And he gets hit by Nami. Their mission is to go into town and buy food. Which makes Carrot very excited. Because she sees many different races here. Peckham says Big Mom's dream is to create a peaceful nation. Where all races live together. And Toto Land is considered the largest nation. Everything on Kakao Island is made from chocolate. Which delights Carrot. So, Nami's group prepares to go buy food. When Peckham's finds out Luffy has entered the town, he is shocked, because he'll be in trouble if anyone knows he led the Straw Hat Pirates here. Suddenly, they hear shouting in the town, while all the residents are surprised, because Luffy and Chopper have eaten all the food at a cafe, causing both of them to become round and chubby. The police say that eating without paying here is illegal, but Luffy argues he had a legitimate reason to eat, because it was too delicious. This makes the police furious and they decide to arrest them and take them to the station. At this moment, Pedro's group arrives. When Pedro is about to rescue Luffy, a girl flies in to stop the police. Nami realizes she's sitting on a flying carpet. It turns out she's the owner of this cafe. Suddenly, she scolds Luffy and Chopper for eating and still being leftovers. So, she forces them to eat all the cafe, which makes Luffy and Chopper feel she is very strange. 
because they are not used to her. At this point, Luffy is too round to move. So, this girl helped them eat, making Luffy and Chopper very happy. She said her coffee shop is about to expire, thus, she asked Luffy to eat it for her. So, the police thought Luffy was a construction worker, it turns out she is pudding. Thus, the police chief congratulated her upcoming wedding, seeing everything has been resolved. So, Nami's group felt relieved. At this point, Pudding had just left Luffy's group to return to her home. But, Luffy finds her house very delicious. So, Luffy and Chopper just focused on eating, because the chocolate here is too delicious, making Nami feel helpless. But, Pudding feels very comfortable. At this point, Luffy thanked Pudding for saving him. However, she also thanked them, because they praised her delicious chocolate, making Pudding feel shy. So, Pudding asked for their names. When she learned his name was Luffy, it surprised Pudding. On Big Mom's side, they are very happy preparing for the tea party. Preparing for this tea party, Big Mom ordered her subordinates to gather ingredients, even killing the people protecting those ingredients. And she also realized Luffy has arrived here, while Pudding was greatly surprised, because he is none other than Luffy of the Straw Hat Pirates. Luffy immediately said, I will become the Pirate King. Suddenly, they realized Pudding also knows Sanji. Nami felt the name Pudding sounded very familiar. So, they immediately recognized, Pudding is indeed Sanji's fiance, and she is the 35th daughter of Big Mom, which shocks Luffy's group. At this moment, Pudding wonders, how they managed to breach the surveillance ships and come here, making her fearful, because she thinks they are enemies. So, Pedro immediately restrains her, fearing she might expose their plans. But, Luffy tells Pedro to let Pudding go, and he told Pudding their purpose for coming here, when she learned that Luffy wants to bring Sanji back. Pudding was very surprised. At this point, she revealed to them that her marriage to Sanji was just a tool for Big Mom to strengthen her power. Most of her elder sisters have faced this fate, but one of Pudding's elder sisters escaped because she sought true love. Suddenly, Brooke asked, does Big Mom really have 35 daughters? So, Pudding said her mother has a total of 39 daughters and 46 sons, thus, making a total of 85 siblings, which surprised Luffy. Big Mom even has up to 43 husbands. Suddenly, Chopper asked, Have you met Sanji yet? Which made Pudding embarrassed, because she had met Sanji once. So, she feels Sanji is a very good and trustworthy person. Nami immediately felt that Pudding already likes Sanji, but Pedro told them they must restrain Pudding, because he feared that Pudding would reveal their location. Then, they wouldn't be able to rescue Sanji anymore. Suddenly, Pudding promised, she wouldn't disclose this information and she would help them rescue Sanji, making Nami and Carrot very happy. But, Pedro still doubted her and asked, how will you help us? So, Pudding started drawing a map of this island for them. At this point, she began to tell them, since childhood, she had dreamed of marrying a good husband, and when Sanji appeared, she realized he was the husband of her dreams. But, Sanji rejected marrying Pudding, because he wanted to return to his crewmates, which surprised Luffy's group, because Sanji had turned down a girl. Pudding realized she couldn't keep Sanji with her, so, she decided to help Sanji return to Luffy's crew. By this time, Pudding had finished drawing the map, so, she pointed them in the direction of Whole Cake Island, and she arranged to meet Luffy's group the next day on the southern side of the island, making Luffy's group feel that Pudding is a very kind girl. Suddenly, patrol soldiers arrived at Pudding's house, so, she told Luffy's group to escape through the back door. Meanwhile, Sanji went to his father's location, but, he didn't want to meet him, while Sanji's two older brothers are heading to a kingdom at war. It turns out the king of this kingdom has hired Jerma 66 to destroy the enemy. On the side of Luffy's group, they had already bought enough food, so, they immediately returned to the Sunny, but, they couldn't find where Peckham's was. Suddenly, Chopper ran up to announce, that he had found a message saying to come back quickly, which surprised Luffy's group, and they realized Peckham's had been captured. But, Luffy found this situation very intriguing, so, he decided to continue forward, on the side of Jerma's 66 soldiers. They were annihilating an entire kingdom, causing many casualties. Suddenly, someone has sneakily shot Sanji's older brother, but, he ordered his subordinates to act as a shield. Now, he was furious, because he had to quickly complete the mission to attend Sanji's wedding. Finally, the battle ended, leaving the king very pleased because Jerma 66 had helped him retain his country, however, the neighboring country had been completely destroyed. Suddenly, Yanji called to inform them, that Sanji's wedding would take place in three days. He was very happy and eager to meet his younger brother again. On Luffy's side, 
they were following Pudding's map, to reach their rendezvous point with her, making Brooke worried, because this territory belonged to a Yonko. Meanwhile, Luffy was eager to get there quickly, suddenly, Chopper and Carrot caught a very sweet scent. It turned out there was a small island nearby. Nami recognized it as Jam Island, which delighted Chopper and Carrot, but, Nami said they couldn't go to that island, because it would be easy to be detected there, so, she told Luffy to change the direction of the sunny. This disappointed Chopper because he couldn't eat jam, suddenly, Luffy wanted to cook again, so, Nami stopped him, because they couldn't afford to let Luffy set the ship on fire again, suddenly, Carrot saw an area of purple water, and Pedro said it was fruit juice from a nearby island flowing into the sea. Nami didn't understand why Pedro knew about it, so, Pedro told them that he had been here once before, suddenly, the sunny shook, and Carrot noticed something beneath the sea, then, it surfaced near the sunny, causing the ship to shake, it turned out to be a giant sea centipede. Pedro recognized it as a creature that likes to eat humans, and it attacked Luffy's group, making Nami and Chopper frightened, but, Luffy was feeling excited, so, he used his Gatling gun attack on it. Just when they thought it was safe, suddenly, an even larger sea centipede appeared, making Luffy and Carrot excited. As it prepared to attack the ship, Luffy continued to fight it, but, this centipede's shell was too tough. Thus, Luffy's attacks had no effect. Pedro advised him to aim for its belly again, so, Luffy immediately used gear 2 and kicked it, causing its tough shell to crack. Thus, he defeated the giant sea centipede, meanwhile, on Whole Cake Island. Big Mom was extremely angry, because she wanted to eat Crocombouche, this made Big Mom's subordinates worried, they had to quickly find Crocombouche for her, if not, Big Mom would destroy the island. Meanwhile, the chefs were trying their best to make Crocombouche, but, they were lacking ingredients. At this point, Big Mom entered the city, destroying everything in her path, and causing the citizens to flee in fear. Big Mom was rampaging through the city to find Crocombouche, even eating everything she saw. Witnessing Big Mom's madness, everyone was terrified. Tamago worried she would destroy the city. So, they urgently urged the chefs to work faster, when a girl was in danger. Moscato immediately rescued her. It turned out he was Big Mom's 16th son. Tamago said they still had 30 minutes until Crocombouche was ready. So, Moscato had to find a way to stop Big Mom. Suddenly, Big Mom attacked him. At this point, Big Mom only cared about Crocombouche, so, she wouldn't care about anyone, even her own child. She continued to attack Moscato, suddenly, Big Mom used the power of the devil fruit, causing Moscato to be terrified. They realized Big Mom was trying to take Moscato's lifespan. Thus, Big Mom took away 40 years of Moscato's lifespan, making shocking everyone, because she had killed her own son. At this moment, Big Mom was still crazed in search of Crocombouche, making everyone worried, because she was about to destroy the city. Suddenly, Jimbei arrived. He recognized that Big Mom was having a fit of madness. It turns out Jimbei had brought Crocombouche with him, so, he jumped up and stuffed it into Big Mom's mouth. Once Big Mom tasted Crocombouche, it helped her calm down, making everyone very happy, because he had saved the city. At this point, Big Mom realized Jimbei had arrived, making her very pleased, but, she didn't understand why Jimbei had come here. Suddenly, Jimbei announced that he wanted to leave her crew. This made Big Mom very angry. Meanwhile, Luffy's group was still following Pudding's map to Whole Cake Island. Suddenly, Luffy saw a sea area colored red. Pedro explained that it was watermelon juice. Carrot noticed there were many types of fruit juices. It turned out that this was a mixed fruit juice area, which delighted them, but Pedro warned that this place was full of dangerous monsters. Suddenly, Luffy saw a giant watermelon, with an orange on the left and a peach on the right. As he stretched his arm to grab it, the giant watermelon immediately opened its mouth and swallowed Luffy whole, surprising everyone. But, Luffy smashed it, and they had fruit to eat, making Luffy, Chopper and Carrot very delighted. Meanwhile, Big Mom was furious with Jimbei, so, she ordered him to follow her. It turns out Jimbei wanted to leave Big Mom's crew, to join Luffy's crew. Jimbei made this decision back when they journeyed together at Impel Down, until Ace died in front of Luffy, which caused him great pain. After that, Luffy overcame his grief and helped Jimbei save Fishman Island. Therefore, Luffy invited Jimbei to join his crew, but, Jimbei initially declined, instead, he promised that once he resolved his own affairs, he would officially join the Straw Hat crew, so, Jimbei came here to fulfill his promise to Luffy, at this moment, Jimbei is accompanying Big Mom to her castle, 
Jinbei remembers a few hours ago he had a serious conversation with the Sun Pirates. He declared that Luffy would change this world. So, Jinbei decided to join the Straw Hat crew, in order to lend his strength to Luffy, Aladdin said. You don't need to repeat these things anymore, because you have talked to us about this a lot over the past two years. Seeing Jinbei feeling awkward, makes everyone burst into laughter, Aladdin says. Just do whatever you want, Jinbei. Jinbei is surprised, because no one opposes him. They realize Jinbei has always sacrificed for Fishman Island, until now. He can finally follow his own will. So, everyone supports Jinbei, which deeply moves him. Suddenly, everyone is concerned for Aladdin, because Jinbei leaving Big Mom's crew will affect him. It turns out that Aladdin's wife is Praline, the 29th daughter of Big Mom, but, she promises to go with Aladdin no matter what happens. And Jinbei apologized to Widatsumi for bringing him here. Praline immediately informs Jinbei, those who want to leave Big Mom's crew will all die. At this moment, Jinbei is facing Big Mom. She agrees to let Jinbei leave her crew. But, Jinbei must give up something in return. So, Big Mom brings out the roulette and says, let's see what you will lose. Meanwhile, Luffy's group is stranded in a densely packed candy sea. Thus, Luffy has to use fire to melt it. It turns out there is a colony of sleeping ants around them. So, before the ants wake up, they need to quickly leave this place. Pedro says he has encountered these ants once before, which makes Luffy curious why he came here. It turns out Pedro and Peckhams were once pirates, and his goal was to steal Big Mom's poneglyph, so, he came here, but, he was defeated by Big Mom, it surprises everyone, even Carrot is hearing Pedro's story for the first time, Nami realizes this place holds sad memories for him, but, Pedro promises to help Luffy's group find Sanji with his experience, because they have been trusted by his two kings, they even showed Luffy's group the poneglyph on Zo Island, Roger saw that Poneglyph, so, he became the Pirate King, which astonishes Luffy, at this moment, he reminds Luffy, this is his chance to take Big Mom's Poneglyph, so, Luffy's group realizes, they are here not only to bring Sanji back, but also to steal Big Mom's Poneglyph, however, Luffy still wants to rescue Sanji first, so, Pedro proposes to help them take the Poneglyph, which will save Luffy time, Luffy sees Pedro's determination, thus, he agrees, Suddenly, the ants start waking up, and they immediately surround Luffy's group, so, they work together to fend off the ants, but, the ants are too many, the ants continuously surround Luffy's group, by the next morning, they finally escape the ants, leaving Luffy feeling exhausted, suddenly, Luffy sees Whole Cake Island, which makes everyone very happy, Pedro says the highest place is Big Mom's castle, at this moment, Nami uses Pudding's map to get to the meeting point, suddenly, Luffy sees Sanji, which surprises Nami and Carrot, but, Sanji quickly disappears, Luffy doesn't know where he went, at this moment, Brooke decides to go with Pedro, because Brooke is not comfortable letting Pedro go alone, turns out Brooke's devil fruit makes it easier for them to obtain the poneglyph, so, they controlled the submarine to leave, while Luffy is very excited, he wants to immediately explore Big Mom's island, because the island has a lot of sweets, but, Nami is worried, she tells Luffy they need to quickly find Sanji and leave. At this moment, Luffy can't see Pudding anywhere, because she was supposed to meet them here. Suddenly, Chopper discovers the ground tastes very good. Nami realizes the ground is made of hardened whipped cream. Luffy is sure Sanji and Pudding are nearby, because he saw Sanji. Suddenly, Chopper and Luffy see Sanji again. But, Sanji runs into the forest, so, they chase after him. At this moment, Luffy's group once again loses sight of Sanji. Chopper notices this is a candy forest. Nami doesn't understand why Sanji is avoiding them. While Luffy's group continues to search for Sanji, they still want to eat the sweets here, which makes them very excited, makes Nami angry, and she tells them to focus on finding Sanji. But, Luffy's group still wants to eat the candy here, which delights Chopper, because the candy flavor here is very sweet and delicious. Seeing them constantly eating, makes Nami feel helpless, because if they don't find Sanji soon, they will have to return to the ship immediately. Suddenly, Chopper realizes this juice is made from melon juice, making Luffy excited. As they were running onto a bridge, they were suddenly attacked by a giant crocodile. But, Nami slipped and fell. Luckily, Luffy managed to save her. So, the crocodile was eating up the bridge. It was surprised to find humans here. After that, the crocodile left. At this point, Nami realizes this forest is very dangerous, so, she suggests they return to the beach to wait for Pudding. But, 
Luffy still wants to continue exploring this place. Suddenly, Nami sees another Luffy, which surprises them. While Luffy is angry, because he doesn't know who this lookalike is. Even his actions are very similar to Luffy's, but, Chopper realizes, he seems like a reflection of Luffy in a mirror. Suddenly, they see Sanji again, which makes them very happy, but, he continued running away. While Luffy was busy fighting his clone, so, Chopper and Carrot immediately chased after Sanji. Making Nami worried and warning them that this forest is very dangerous. Luffy tells Nami to go with them to help. After he deals with fake Luffy, he will chase after them. So, Luffy starts fighting his clone, but, all his moves are exactly like Luffy's, which annoys him. So, he immediately uses a barrage of punches to attack him. While Nami's group is trying to chase after Sanji, suddenly, they see a giant person buried underground, which surprises them. Chopper sees he's buried underground, so, he wonders who buried him. It turns out he buried himself, which makes Chopper think he's foolish. So, they continue running to find Sanji. He keeps telling Nami's group to find fruit to help him, and he will help them find the person, but, Nami doesn't trust him. Suddenly, they are attacked by a giant rabbit, surprising Nami's group, when Carrot is about to fight it. Nami tells Carrot to run away, but, it doesn't immediately chase after them. At this point, Nami realizes this forest is very dangerous, and she realizes Sanji is also very strange, so, Nami thinks that person is not the real Sanji. Suddenly, Nami sees the log poses continuously spinning erratically, which worries them. The forest also begins to change and speak, making Nami's group scared and run away. Suddenly, the rabbit continues to chase after them. Carrot realizes he is not from the mink tribe, so, Chopper thinks he possesses devil fruit abilities. At this point, the homies in the forest are still pursuing them. When Randolph intends to attack Nami, Carrot immediately intervenes. Now, Carrot is certain he is not from the mink tribe, because he cannot use electricity, so, Carrot defeats his bird. But, Randolph continues to throw weapons at them. Meanwhile, Sanji has entered the castle of Jerma 66, which reminds him of when he was bullied by his older brothers as a child. Suddenly, Yanji appears and teases Sanji, because he has become a pirate. But, Sanji doesn't want to talk to him, and tells him, get lost, which makes Yanji angry, so, he insults Sanji as being useless. But, Sanji still doesn't care about him. Thus, Yanji attacks Sanji, making him furious. Sanji decides to fight seriously with Yanji, on Nami's side. They have managed to dodge Randolph's weapons. Unexpectedly, Randolph's spear has pierced through his own head from behind, causing him a lot of pain. At this point, Nami's group is returning to find Luffy. While Luffy is still fighting his doppelganger, suddenly, both of them use Gear 3 and unleash extremely powerful punches but, they are still evenly matched. Nami sees Luffy, so, she tells Luffy they need to return to the sunny ship, and Luffy immediately runs after them. At this point, Luffy's group has returned to the bridge, so, they jump across the river together, they think they are about to escape from this forest, but, they end up returning to where the old man is, making Nami's group surprised, because they don't understand why the old man is here again, so, Luffy's group continues running away, unexpectedly, this time they end up back where the old man is again, surprising Nami. Suddenly, they see the trees in the forest moving, shocking them. But, Luffy also becomes very strange. So, he grabs Nami, then, they realize, this person is fake Luffy. Turns out her name is Brulee, Big Mom's eighth daughter. She finds Nami's face very beautiful, so, she decides to disfigure her face. Meanwhile, Sanji is observing the Jerma 66 army being trained. Turns out Reiju has come here to find Sanji, but, Sanji remains cold towards her, because he doesn't want anything to do with this family, and Sanji also dislikes seeing his father, but, they hang a large portrait of him in Sanji's room. Reiju tells Sanji that, their father defeated the four kings of the North Blue, to make the Vinsmoke family the rulers of the North Blue, so, she tells Sanji to return and be a prince again, it would be more enjoyable than being a pirate, seeing the beautiful maids, Sanji is delighted. But, Sanji still doesn't care about Reiju's words, and he doesn't want to get married. Suddenly, Sanji's father appears, making Sanji feel uncomfortable. Turns out his name is Judge, the king of the Jerma kingdom. He realizes Sanji still resents him, and Sanji doesn't even acknowledge him as his father. Suddenly, Judge asks Sanji, did you injure Yanji? Sanji replies, because I am stronger than him. So, Judge decides to challenge Sanji, to test his strength. 
Meanwhile, Luffy is lost in the forest, because the homies confused his direction, at this moment, Sanji is preparing to fight his father. This excites the Jerma army greatly. Meanwhile, Yanji has been kicked by Sanji, causing his face to swell on one side, making him very angry, but, because his face is too stiff, they have to use a machine to fix Yanji's face. On Judge's side, he attacks Sanji, but, Sanji easily dodges his attacks, and kicks Judge, making him realize that Sanji is stronger. Sanji said he will not marry, he came here only to protect his crewmates, but Judge asked, do you want to betray your family? This made him angry, and he said, you are not my family. Sanji remembered his childhood, since he was young, he has loved cooking, while Sanji's three siblings always bullied him, because they were much stronger than Sanji, so, they always saw Sanji as useless. Suddenly, Judge appeared, Sanji thought he would protect him, but, Judge was very cold to Sanji, because he wanted his son to become a warrior, however, Sanji was too weak, he said, you're just a disgrace to the family, and Reiju also laughed at him. So, Ichiji and Niji continued to hold on to Sanji, allowing Yanji to beat him, causing Sanji great anguish. Now, Sanji deeply resents his family, Judge continues to attack Sanji, but, Sanji manages to block his spear. Judge realizes Sanji has used hockey, so, he offers Sanji a sword, but, Sanji refuses to use the sword, because Sanji's hands are meant only for cooking. Judge then belittles Sanji's cooking skills, because he considers serving food to others as disgraceful work. So, Judge continues to attack Sanji. He then flies up into the sky, and dives down towards Sanji at incredible speed. Sanji immediately uses his flaming leg to strike him, but, Judge manages to block it, then, he grabs Sanji's leg and throws him. Judge continues releasing electricity from his leg and kicks Sanji away. He says that the Jerma Sanji once knew is now in the past, at this moment, Sanji remains calm and smokes a cigarette. He recalls his painful past. Judge charges towards Sanji once again, so, he used his flaming leg to attack him, but, Judge caught his subordinate and used him as a shield. He even punched through his own men. This surprised Sanji, and he immediately defeated Sanji, seeing Judge victorious, made the soldiers very happy. Reiju also anticipated this outcome, on Luffy's side, he is still searching for Nami's group, meanwhile, the homies are trying to capture him, so, they immediately attack Luffy, which surprises Luffy, because everything in this forest seems alive, thus, Luffy fights back against them, making them furious, meanwhile, Brook's group is piloting the submarine deep inside Whole Cake Island, Pedro sees a city ahead, so, they decide to leave the submarine behind and enter the city, by now, Luffy has defeated all the homies, but, he encounters this old man again, making Luffy uncomfortable, while he asks Luffy to help him pull out the spear, because he finds this old man too annoying, so, Luffy helps him, suddenly, Luffy sees Chopper, on Sanji's side, Reiju is taking care of his wounds, she's surprised to see Sanji has become stronger, by now, Sanji has driven Judge out of the room, because Sanji realizes he's even worse than before, but, Judge says all the soldiers of Jerma, they all willingly sacrificed themselves for the Vinsmoke family, and they are the strongest force of Jerma, if he could ally with Big Mom, then, his dream of ruling the seas would become reality, he even told Sanji, that he couldn't let his beloved children be taken by Big Mom, so, he chose Sanji instead, the useless son he had abandoned, which made Sanji furious, suddenly, Reiju put a bracelet on Sanji, he said this bracelet is like the celestial dragon's collar, if Sanji tries to escape, it will explode automatically. And he forced Sanji into marriage, making Sanji very uncomfortable. On Luffy's side, he met Chopper, but, he ran away. So, Luffy immediately chased after Chopper. Suddenly, he saw another Chopper. Nami and Carrot are also here, which makes Luffy confused about what's happening. It turns out this forest is called the Seducing Woods. Anyone who enters here will wander until death. At this moment, Sanji remembered Zeph when he was bandaging Sanji's hands, and he was angry because Sanji used his hands to fight, which made Sanji angry, because he had to protect his hands, on Whole Cake Island. The people there already knew that Jinbei had left Big Mom's crew, so, they considered Jinbei a traitor, while Brook is worrying about Jinbei, and he has told Pedro about Jinbei and Luffy's story, Brook realizes Jinbei's decision to leave Big Mom's crew, is to join Luffy's crew, suddenly, Pedro sees pudding shopping here, Turns out she's looking for a wedding dress, which surprises Brooke, because earlier Pudding had arranged to meet Luffy's group on the southern side of the island. Suddenly, 
they see Tamago is also here. Turns out they've discovered all of them, shocking Brooke and Pedro. They don't understand why they were exposed. On Beiji's side, they've caught Peckham's. Right now, Beiji is fooling around with his wife and child, and he blames Peckham's for not cooperating with him. Beiji even insults Peckham's as a weakling. So, Beiji decides to push Peckham's into the sea. But Peckham says, don't underestimate Big Mom. Thus, Beiji fires his gun, causing Peckham's to fall into the sea, while Luffy is still chasing after the fake Sanji, which shocks him, because Sanji knows how to climb trees like a monkey. Luffy weaves his fingers into a net to catch Sanji. Suddenly, another Sanji appears, surprising Luffy, on Big Mom's side, they've encountered Caesar, which frightens him. Turns out Big Mom has invested a lot of money into Caesar's research, because she wants to create giant human races, but until now, Caesar still hasn't completed his research. It turns out Caesar conducted this research on the children. Even though Caesar knew this research was not feasible, he still took money from Big Mom to indulge with the girls, because at that time he had Doflamingo backing him. However, he didn't expect Doflamingo to be defeated by Luffy, which led him into his current predicament. At this point, Big Mom keeps asking him about the giant race research, but Caesar blamed everything on Luffy and Law, because they had destroyed his research facility, so he couldn't complete the experiment. Unexpectedly, Big Mom had built another research facility for Caesar, which shocked him. At this point, Caesar feels very helpless, because the experiment to turn humans into giants is impossible. It turns out Big Mom's eldest son is named Parispero. He will be responsible for overseeing Caesar. Caesar discovers he is holding his heart, which makes him hate Sanji, because earlier he didn't return his heart to him. Parispero said that if he doesn't complete the experiment within two weeks, he will turn Caesar into candy, which terrifies Caesar. Meanwhile, Luffy is very exhausted, because he has caught all of them. He doesn't understand why there are so many of them. So, Luffy decides to find out who is real. Suddenly, Luffy hears Nami scolding, which scares him. Unexpectedly, she turns out to be the real Nami. At this moment, Nami scolds Luffy for disappearing, leaving her to search for him. Nami realizes they are very much alike. So, Nami tells Luffy that they were attacked. It turns out, when Brule tried to scratch Nami's face, Nami used the clean attack to strike her in the stomach, allowing Nami to escape. Brule continues to charge at her, so, Carrot attacks her. But, Brule creates a mirror to block Carrot's attack. Unexpectedly, she could reflect Carrot's techniques. It turns out Brule ate the devil fruit called Mirror Mirror. So, she can reflect their attacks back at them. Carrot continues her assault, but this time, Carrot gets sucked into the mirror, and she can't escape, causing Nami and Chopper to worry. At this moment, Brule informs Nami and Chopper that they have received orders from Big Mom, that is to imprison Luffy's group in this forest. So, Brule immediately orders the homies to capture both of them. Chopper realizes there are too many of them, thus, he tells Nami to go find Luffy, while he stays here to stop them, so, Nami leaves. Chopper then uses a rumble ball, and transforms into a giant monster, but, Brule is still not afraid, so, she orders the homies to capture them, however, Nami continues to try running to find Luffy, at this moment, Luffy decides he will go save Chopper and Carrot, but, Nami tells him they are no longer here, so, Nami asks this old man, however, he still refuses to tell them, on Big Mom's side, she knows Luffy is being held captive in the seducing woods, which makes her very happy, so, she calls Cracker, and Big Mom orders him to go defeat Luffy, while Nami is pressing this old man to tell them, where Chopper and Carrot are, but, he wanted fruit juice, so, Luffy promised to juice him, and he told them, Chopper fought with the homies, but, he got caught by them, Luffy wonders why these trees can move, turns out every six months, Big Mom takes one month of people's lifespan, he explained that Big Mom ate the soul soul fruit, allowing her to take away others' lifespans, then, she puts the collected souls into anything she wants, and will help it live, these things are called homies, clone their copies or the abilities of Brule transformed, at this point, Luffy wonders who he is, so, he told them, I am Lin Lin's husband, surprising them, because he is Big Mom's husband, while the homies are afraid, because he is one of three sweet commanders of Big Mom coming here. They asked why Cracker came here, making him angry, because he felt unwelcome, so, Cracker immediately emitted a terrifying killing intent, and caused a large explosion, which annihilated all the surrounding homies. 
While Nami and Luffy were still in shock, because he is Big Mom's husband, suddenly, Cracker arrived, surprising Nami, because they didn't know who he was. Cracker immediately grabbed the old man's head and lifted him up, surprising them, because they thought he was a giant, Cracker scolded him for revealing information to the enemy. It turns out he just wants to meet his daughters, Lola and Shifan, surprising Nami, because he is Lola's father. Nami remembers Lola once said, her mother was a strong pirate. And Lola had given Nami her mother's Vivra card. So, Nami is certain Lola is Big Mom's daughter. Suddenly, Randolph tried to attack Luffy. But, he was stopped by Cracker emitting a terrifying killing intent. Which destroyed all the homies. At this point, Luffy realizes he's very strong. Cracker immediately warned his subordinates not to interfere with his fight. Making them afraid. Cracker realizes Luffy defeated Doflamingo. Because Big Mom worries that Brule won't handle Luffy. So, she sent Cracker here, suddenly, Brulee appeared with a giant tree, turns out he is Kingbaum, the owner of the seducing woods. Cracker said that tomorrow the Vinsmoke family will meet Big Mom, so, they have to resolve this quickly. Suddenly, Brulee nullified her abilities, turning clones back into forest animals. At this point, Luffy saw that Chopper and Carrot had been captured. Turns out they were trapped in the mirror world, so, Brulee immediately shattered the mirror, making Luffy and Nami worried. Luckily, Chopper and Carrot are still safe. At this point, Chopper told Luffy something. Suddenly, Cracker was about to kill Lola's father, because Big Mom had ordered his execution, making him fearful, because he just wanted to meet his two daughters. Luckily, Luffy managed to block his attack in time. And he promptly saved Lola's father. This immediately enraged Cracker, who decided to fight Luffy, while Brule ordered the homies to capture Nami. So, Nami and Pound quickly ran away. He was surprised that Nami knew Lola, thus, Nami showed him the Vivra card, unexpectedly, that piece of Vivra card frightened the homies, turns out this homie belongs to Big Mom. Meanwhile, Luffy was confronting Cracker, so, he immediately used Gear 2 to battle him, thus, Luffy attacked Cracker with his fiery punch, however, he managed to block his punch, unexpectedly, Cracker sprouted three arms, surprising Luffy, because his hands keep appearing. So, he ran over to stab him, and pushed Luffy backwards, on Nami's side. She saw the homies were afraid of this Vivre card piece. Suddenly, Luffy was knocked over here, surprising Nami and Pound. He introduced his nickname as Thousand Arms Cracker, because he could sprout as many arms as he wanted. Turns out Cracker is wanted with a bounty of 860 million berries, but, Luffy still didn't back down. He, immediately used Gear 2 to attack him, but, Cracker used a shield to block it and Luffy was knocked back again. Though Luffy continued to stand up, he was determined to defeat him, so, Luffy continued to use Gear 3, and he punched him with a very powerful blow, but, Luffy was still pushed back by him, so, he immediately used six swords to stab Luffy, forcing him to constantly dodge, but, he spun his swords around, and stabbed Luffy in the stomach, sending him flying far away, making Nami worried, because she realized Luffy was in trouble. Even though they were just underlings of Big Mom, when Nami decided to go help Luffy, so, she was stopped by Brule and Kingbaum, she told Nami that, two years ago, there were four notorious pirates who came here, but, they were all defeated before meeting Big Mom. Only Beiji remained safe by joining Big Mom's crew, however, there's a guy named Yurog who is very strong, he defeated one of the sweet commanders, but then, he fought Cracker, and Yurog was defeated by Cracker. So, Brule believes they cannot disrupt Big Mom's tea party. Suddenly, she captured Nami, and Brule intended to drag Nami into the Miro world. Unexpectedly, Pound attacked Brule to save Nami, making Brule furious. But, Nami immediately created a thunderbolt to attack her, and Nami defeated Brule, causing her to retreat into the Miro world. At this point, Nami realized the homies were very afraid of Big Mom's Vivre card, so, she devised a way to deal with them while Luffy was still fighting Cracker, but, all his attacks were ineffective against him, on Sanji's side, he met Reiju, she informed him that Ichiji and Niji would return tomorrow, making Sanji uncomfortable, their family will be at Big Mom's castle, to discuss organizing Sanji's wedding, meanwhile, Luffy used gear 3 on his legs to attack Cracker, but, he still managed to block it, Luffy continued to attack him, however, he countered back, even though Luffy tried to block the blow, but, he was still knocked straight into the mountain. Even though Luffy was knocked down many times, he still didn't give up, and Luffy continued to charge towards him. 
He realized Cracker's shield was too tough, even Luffy's armament hockey couldn't break through it, and Cracker continued to defeat Luffy. At this point, he advised Luffy to leave, because Sanji is a noble prince, and can't be with a lowly pirate like Luffy. His words made Luffy angry, so, he immediately decided to use Gear 4, and he instantly pushed Cracker back, seeing Luffy change his form. He continued to underestimate Luffy. Unexpectedly, Luffy moved very quickly, with just one punch, he pierced through Cracker's shield, seeing Cracker knocked down, surprising the homies. Meanwhile, Chopper and Carrot are trying to find a way out of the mirror world, but, they see this place is too vast. Even their legs are shackled with two iron weights, making it very difficult for them to move. Meanwhile, Nami is using Big Mom's Vivra card to command the homies to go support Luffy, which makes them fearful. But, since Nami holds Big Mom's Vivra card, they cannot resist her command. At this time, Luffy continues to attack Cracker, so, he stands up to face him in a battle of strength. Unexpectedly, Luffy's fist was stronger, and he immediately shattered Cracker into many pieces. Suddenly, the real Cracker appeared, and he cut through Luffy's hockey, surprising Luffy. Turns out, from the beginning, Luffy was only fighting his armored suit, Cracker said. I've eaten the bis bis fruit, so, I am the biscuit human, and he could create biscuits just by clapping his hands. Cracker informed Luffy about this. Very few people know his true form, because he hates getting hurt, so, he always wears armor to fight. Unexpectedly, he created a lot of biscuit warriors, surprising Luffy, he said. You will never take Sanji away. But Luffy declared, I will definitely meet Sanji again. So, Cracker immediately commanded the biscuit soldiers to attack Luffy, and he fought back against them. But there were too many of them, as a result. Luffy began to tire, so, he decided to attack Cracker, but, Cracker used the biscuit soldiers to block Luffy's blows, making Luffy frustrated as he tried to find a way to attack him, very quickly, he defeated Cracker's biscuit soldiers, so, Luffy immediately attacked Cracker directly, however, Cracker managed to block all of Luffy's attacks, and he knocked him away, at this point, he continued to create many more biscuit soldiers, meanwhile, Nami had hidden inside King Bomb's mouth, and she ordered the homies to hinder Cracker, making them fearful, but, they couldn't defy Nami's command, on Chopper and Carrot's side, they are still searching for an exit. Chopper discovered that this Miro world connects to all mirrors on Whole Cake Island, so, they can use Brulee's ability to find Sanji, as for Brooke and Pedro, they have hidden inside one of Cracker's biscuit soldiers, to infiltrate Big Mom's castle. Meanwhile, Luffy is still battling Cracker, and he has defeated many of his biscuit soldiers, despite making Luffy exhausted. Cracker still easily created many more biscuit soldiers, suddenly, Luffy became serious, realizing he needed to defeat him quickly, so, Luffy immediately used a new technique to create numerous fists, continuously attacking Cracker's biscuit soldiers. Suddenly, Cracker ambushed him, sending Luffy flying far away, on Big Mom's side, she is preparing to meet the Vinsmoke family while Judge is waiting for Ichiji and Niji to return. At this moment, they were eager to meet Sanji, and Sanji arrived, making them very happy. So, Niji came to congratulate Sanji on his upcoming wedding, but, he continued to tease and provoke Sanji, making him uncomfortable. At this time, Sanji's family was sitting down to eat together. Judge mentioned that if they allied with Big Mom, they would be withdrawn from participating in the reverie conference by the world government. But, aligning with Big Mom would provide additional strength to Jerma. Suddenly, Niji continued to tease and provoke Sanji. But, Sanji only noticed that there was still food left on his plate, and he said, You fool, you don't understand the importance of food. This made Niji angry, so, he called the head chef over, and blamed her for cooking poorly. When he threw the plate of food towards her, Sanji immediately intercepted it, causing the food to fall on the ground. Sanji was furious because he dared to attack a woman, on Luffy's side, he was fiercely battling Cracker, but, Cracker continued to create waves of biscuit soldiers, which left Luffy exhausted, Cracker said. My ability to create biscuits is limitless, however, Luffy remained confident that he would defeat him, so, he smashed through all the biscuit soldiers with his fists. Suddenly, Luffy realized he was reaching his limit, therefore, he decided to use his ultimate move. He enlarged his arm and unleashed a tremendously powerful punch at Cracker, but, he used all of his biscuit soldiers to block, when he was about to defeat Cracker, suddenly, Luffy arrived at the limit, causing him to deflate and fly away, by now, Luffy was completely exhausted, 
He needs 10 minutes to be able to use hockey again. Niji's side is very upset with Sanji. Even Sanji dropped the food on the ground, making everyone surprised. He realizes this food is amazing. This immediately moved the head chef to tears. Niji instantly became enraged and attacked Sanji. But, judge stopped him, because Sanji's wedding is approaching. At this point, they continue to mock Sanji, saying he's unworthy of being a prince. Suddenly, judge pulled out a photo of Zef, and he investigated all the information about Sanji and Zef, which made Sanji anxious. Judge then threatened Sanji, if he doesn't listen to him, then, judge will order someone to kill Zef, making Sanji feel helpless, and he remembers the time he first met Zef, he continuously kicked Sanji, but, Sanji still didn't give up, and he said someday he would find the all blue, suddenly, a big wave hit Sanji and threw him into the sea, so, Zef immediately jumped into the sea to rescue him, the next morning when Sanji woke up, he realized that he and Zef were stranded on a large rocky outcrop, last night, their ship sank in the storm, now, Zef gave Sanji a small bag of food, but, Sanji noticed that Zef's bag was bigger than his own, so, he felt uneasy, Zef said it's because he's an adult, so, he needs to eat more, now, Sanji and Zef separated, each on one side, waiting for a passing ship to come by, Sanji realized his food would last for 20 days, so, Sanji was very confident he would find a ship, time passed quickly, 25 days went by, even Sanji's food was running out, but, Sanji dropped his food into the sea, after 70 days, Sanji was very hungry, thus, he went to see if Zef had died yet, suddenly, Sanji realized that his food was still plentiful, so, Sanji decided to rob all of this food, unexpectedly, inside the large bag was all treasure, Sanji realized at this point, Zef had been starving all this time, and he gave him all the food, suddenly, Sanji remembered, when his legs got tangled up, he had cut his own leg off to rescue Sanji, this immediately moved Sanji, he didn't understand why Zef helped him, it turns out Zef's dream was also to find the all blue, after that, they built a restaurant together on the sea, and Zef taught Sanji to become a chef, but, he was constantly scolded by Zef, when Sanji decided to go with Luffy, then, he thanked Zef, for everything he had done for Sanji over the years, so now, Sanji is forced to obey judge to protect Zef, on Cracker's side, he ordered the biscuit soldiers to find Luffy, but, he was completely exhausted, so, Luffy couldn't fight back against them, when Luffy was in danger, then, Kingbaum immediately saved him, turns out Nami ordered Kingbaum, at this point, Luffy told Nami, he needed 10 minutes to recover his hockey, so, Nami immediately ordered the homies to protect Luffy, because Nami holds Big Mom's Vivre card, thus, they dare not defy her orders, at this point, Cracker's biscuit soldiers had caught up, so, Nami told them to run away, inside Brulee's mural world, she was very angry and wanted revenge on Nami, while Chopper and Carrot were still searching for Sanji, but, they searched and still couldn't find him, suddenly, they saw Big Mom, making both of them afraid, they realized Sanji's wedding was about to take place, on her part. The girl feels that Sanji is very kind. Suddenly, Niji came to find her. It turns out he wants revenge on Sanji. At this time, Sanji just returned to the room. He saw this girl was injured all over. Making Sanji angry, because she was completely innocent, but was cruelly beaten by them. Suddenly, Yanji arrived. And he told Sanji to follow him. While this girl was trying to stop Sanji, but, he was determined to meet them. At this time, Yanji led Sanji to the research room of Jerma 66, making him surprised, because all the soldiers of Jerma were produced here. On Nami's side, she ordered the homies to attack the biscuit soldiers, making them afraid, because they were no match for Cracker. Nami ordered Kingbound to run very fast, to help extend the time for Luffy, while Cracker was still chasing them, his intimidating presence caused the homies to be destroyed. Suddenly, Kingbound stopped, he realized Cracker was approaching. Nami saw the true form of Cracker, which surprised her, while Cracker did not understand why Kingbaum obeyed Nami's orders, so, he promptly chops down Kingbaum's top tree, making them scared, on Sanji's side, he realized they were creating clones, it turns out that Judge used to work with Vegapunk, and Vegapunk discovered Lineage Factor, which can give the owner extraordinary strength, but, the world government banned research on this, so, the research group disbanded, after that, Judge conducted cloning research on his own, and he selected the strongest soldiers, to create this clone army, which made Sanji very angry, because he found this disgusting, suddenly, Ichiji and Niji arrived. As soon as he saw Niji, 
Sanji immediately attacked him. At this point, Nami realized they couldn't run anymore, because they were surrounded. So, Nami decided to hold them off, to give Luffy time to recover. She said she would fight Cracker, and Nami told Kingbaum to protect Luffy, which surprised him, because Cracker is very strong. So, Cracker commanded the Biscuit soldiers to attack Nami, but, Nami used wind to block him, and she continued to create lightning to strike the Biscuit soldiers, but, they were not harmed at all, so, they immediately attacked Nami. At this point, Cracker continuously mocked Nami. He even insulted Sanji, for putting them in this dangerous situation. Nami said that although Sanji is a lecher, he would never abandon his friends. So now, we will protect him as well. Then, Cracker charged at Nami. Thus, Nami created lightning to block him, but, Cracker was too strong. He immediately knocked the clean attack out of Nami's hand, when he was about to finish Nami off. Luffy immediately appeared and punched him, which delighted him because Luffy had returned. On Sanji's side, he kicked Niji in the face, sending him flying, but, Ichiji then threatened Sanji, saying they had captured Zef in the East Blue, so, Sanji couldn't continue resisting them. At this point, they continued to mock and look down on Sanji, because he didn't dare to fight back against them for someone else's sake. So, Sanji continued to recall his childhood. It turned out the judge had high expectations for them from a young age, and he wanted to train them to become warriors. At this point, he had them jump from the balcony. Sanji's brothers easily overcame it, but only Sanji felt scared, because it was too high, and Sanji couldn't do it. Next was a race test, even though Sanji fell, but judge didn't care about him. Sanji failed all the other tests. Seeing Sanji playing with a turtle, they started bullying him. When Sanji dueled with Niji, he was mercilessly beaten by him, which made them very happy. Finally, judge got the test results. While Sanji's siblings all met the conditions to become warriors, only Sanji was considered a failure, because he hadn't undergone genetic modifications. Sanji was just an ordinary person, which made Judge angry. At this point, only Reiju cared about Sanji. It turned out Reiju always pretended to laugh at Sanji, because she didn't want to be beaten by them as well. When Sanji was feeding a mouse, Judge walked in and scolded Sanji, because Sanji's behavior was not befitting of royalty. He immediately threw the mouse outside, and forbade Sanji from cooking anymore which made Sanji very miserable. At this point, Judge felt there was no hope of turning Sanji into a warrior. So, he pretended to announce that Sanji had died, and they imprisoned Sanji, because Judge did not recognize Sanji as his son. At this point, Judge was still very proud of his warrior children, which made him very happy. So, he hugged them. While Sanji was imprisoned, Sanji still couldn't believe his father treated him this way. He didn't even remember Sanji's mother. It turned out that Sanji liked to cook, so, he could bring food to his mother, even though Sanji's mother knew his food wasn't tasty, she still ate it, which made Sanji very happy, so, Sanji promised to always cook for her, but one day, Sanji's mother passed away, which made him very sad, at this point, Sanji asked the guards for books and cooking utensils, thus, Sanji started practicing cooking in prison, suddenly, Sanji was discovered by Ichiji, they realized Sanji was still alive. So, they continued to beat Sanji, causing him great pain. Then, Reiju bandaged Sanji's wounds. She said that the three of them didn't have emotions like Sanji. So, they didn't feel sad or guilty at all. At this point, Sanji could no longer endure being beaten by them. Thus, Sanji asked Reiju to help him escape. Immediately, Reiju bent the iron door for Sanji, to help him escape. At this time, the Jerma army was engaged in a battle in the East Blue. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Reiju led Sanji to escape. While Sanji was looking for the key to unlock his handcuffs, he was discovered by Judge, but, Sanji was determined to leave. Judge said that a brat like him wouldn't be able to survive, and he was ready to let Sanji leave, because he only saw Sanji as his disgrace, which made Sanji very miserable. So, Sanji ran away. At this point, Reiju took Sanji to the pier, and she said, never come back here again, because the sea is vast, there will come a day when you find true friends. So, Reiju let Sanji go, and he never wanted to return there again. At this point, Sanji was beaten badly by these three, leaving him heavily injured. After they left, Reiju arrived, and she immediately dismissed the doctors. She scolded Sanji for the upcoming wedding, while he let himself get hurt. Reiju didn't understand why Sanji came back here. On Luffy's side, he had recovered his strength. So, Luffy decided to fight Cracker. Suddenly, Luffy felt hungry. But, Cracker immediately attacked him. This time, 
he was determined to capture Luffy and Nami, however, Luffy smelled the scent of baked biscuits, so, he ate Cracker's biscuits, unexpectedly, they were too hard, Cracker said, my biscuits are not ordinary biscuits, because they can block your attacks, suddenly, Nami created a heavy rain, surprising Cracker, Cracker immediately ordered the biscuit soldiers to attack Luffy, but, his biscuit attacks became soft, so, they couldn't harm Luffy, it turns out Nami's rain made them soft, which delighted Luffy, and he immediately attacked them, this time, he could defeat them very easily, but, Cracker continued to create more biscuit soldiers, so, Luffy ate all of his biscuits, making Cracker furious, thus, he continued to create biscuit soldiers, but, they were constantly eaten clean by Luffy, now, the rain has stopped, so, Cracker immediately created a lot of biscuit soldiers, Nami said there's a way to make biscuits taste better, which delighted Luffy, suddenly they ran away, so, Cracker chased after Nami and Luffy, on the other side, Chopper and Carrot are still looking for Sanji, suddenly, they were found by Brulee, causing Chopper and Carrot to be frightened, at this time, Luffy threw Cracker's biscuit soldiers into the juice river, making his biscuits taste better, seeing Luffy continuously eating his biscuits, making Cracker uncomfortable, unexpectedly, Luffy ate a lot and became round and chubby, he realized Luffy couldn't eat anymore, so, Cracker immediately created a lot of biscuit soldiers, but, Nami continued to create rain, to help Luffy eat all of his biscuits, at this point, Sanji's face was very swollen, so, Reiju put a mask on Sanji, causing him a lot of pain, unexpectedly, Sanji's face immediately healed, it turns out that mask can help reduce swelling for Sanji, at this time, Reiju didn't understand who Sanji learned to protect women from, it turns out that in the past, Zef didn't recruit female chefs on the ship, because he would never hit women, and that's a principle from prehistoric times, on Luffy's side, he ate very full, making him unable to eat anymore, but, Cracker is also very weary, Luffy said, I will eat all of your biscuits, so, he promptly created many more biscuit soldiers, and he immediately ordered them to attack Luffy, but, Luffy is very full, while Nami confidently said, Luffy will become the pirate king, so, his stomach is limitless, Nami promptly conjured rain, despite Luffy being very full already, he is still determined to eat them all to meet Sanji again, at this moment, Reiju realizes it's time to meet Big Mom, so, she tells Sanji to get ready, on Luffy's side, he's devouring all the biscuit soldiers once again, making him very full, but, Cracker continues to create biscuits, forcing Luffy to keep eating, this surprises Cracker, because Luffy can still keep eating, at this point, they see him about to explode, but Luffy says, I will never waste my food, so, Cracker decides to use his sword to stab into his stomach, suddenly, Luffy activates gear 4, unexpectedly, he transforms into a very large form, surprising Cracker, and Luffy calls this state Tankman, seeing Luffy's enormous body, surprises Nami, but, Cracker still rushes in to attack Luffy, unexpectedly, his sword couldn't cut him, which made Cracker furious, so, he exerted all his strength to stab Luffy, but, he still got bounced back, because Luffy's body is very tough, Cracker continues to attack, unexpectedly, this time Luffy grabs him tightly, making him unable to escape, so, Luffy immediately swallows him deep inside, while the biscuit soldiers are rushing to rescue Cracker, thus, Luffy immediately sends him flying with a powerful blow, sending him flying far away, even flying through the forest and straight into the city. While Big Mom is relaxing and eating, Cracker is still flying at a very fast speed. He even crashes straight into Big Mom's castle. At this moment, everyone realizes, Cracker has been defeated by Straw Hat Luffy. Today's video ends here. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel to support Oni-chan in future videos. Thank you for watching, much love to you all.